Hey everyone. So, this will almost be the same talk as last year, except for the questions, which hopefully you will have lots of, which is why I'll be hurrying, which is a really, really good thing because you'll see this in a few places. Our, our infrastructure is becoming more and more stable and less and less panic on fire, which is really, really nice. Um, there's one major or minor difference between the two. This year is the first year we had more clients on the IPv6 only network than on the dual stack network. So IPv6 is here. <laughs> we had a lot more VPN traffic on the dual stack network. And if you are familiar with most VPN solutions, they don't really deal with stuff nicely, especially Net64 is, is, I mean, Net64 is lying to you on a networking level. so. VPN solutions tend to not really like this. Long story short, um, if not for this issue, a lot more people would probably be on the V6 only network. Of course, if their VPN worked, then they would probably be using that, which is really, really nice. So for the second time, last year was the first time, we actually had some time to sit down and breathe instead of just running around fixing all the things at all the times and, and keeling over and dying in a corner after. So last year, the running joke was something will happen, something will explode every second because this, this silence, it can't be good. Something must be happening and we just don't see it yet. This year, people did not even talk about this anymore. So they didn't even think about like it was two years ago or 10 years ago, they were just, this was normal. Stuff being boring was normal, which is totally awesome. Of course, things work instead of us always fixing stuff. We have place, uh, reached this place of stability. We are just doing minor changes. We are doing evolutionary changes. We don't like toss everything out and start anew as we, as we did a few years ago. People are actually getting sleep. I think I got six hours of sleep last night. That's way more than we had a few years back. So this is really, really nice. Um, our setup is pretty much still the same. We have our ASR 1K, which does the routing. Um, it, does the, it does the next 6 4 It does not do uh, DNS 6 4 and all those things. It does not do DHCP anymore. So we're starting to move services towards our servers, which are redundant, and the ASR is not. All monitoring is done with Prometheus and Grafana and we are emitting all that data to grafana.com on their Cortex cluster. So if you go to dashboard Fosdemorg, you will be seeing their stuff so you, do, so you don't hammer our servers into, into submission. Of course, peak yesterday when I, when I tweeted the dashboard was like, I think, 80 queries per second, which is quite a bit. So what we do with video is still the same. I, here, I, I can't really open it, but we have those video boxes, which are new, and there will be a link later which, where, you can, where you can clone those and, and redo those. Everything here is, is open source. Um, all these streams are sent to the rendering farm, which is made of old laptops, and then we are setting them offsite for, for streaming and such. So if you're looking at the stream, it's actually coming from the outside into, into the building. And we've got an, our own review system, and people are already reviewing videos, and speakers are already reviewing their content, and things are being transcoded, so we can upload the final versions relatively soon, hopefully. This is a picture of our render farm. <laughs> so every single year, what we do is we grab um, a bunch of ThinkPads off of eBay, and we sell them on-site after the event. So for us, this render farm is basically free. Of course, we are just reselling them at, at cost. We are using new model every year. So two years ago, we had the X220. Then we had the X230. This year, we had the X240. You can kind of guess what we'll have next year, probably. Of course, we're just sticking to that price point, And it just goes up by 10 every year. So that's nice. And if you think, hey, I want one of these, you're way too late, because people are, are standing in line to grab those. So if you want those. First day, go to InfoDesk, grab a voucher, else you can't get any. Timelines, um, installation of router. We did this a lot earlier uh, for quite some time already. 
network up. We actually had most of the network up on Thursday. There were some minor, some major hiccups, but basically stuff was working Friday night, which was later, like in totally working state than last year. But in, in partially working state, we were a lot earlier, which again is good because it gives us more time. We don't have to do everything in a panic. Uh, if you look at 2015, this was a really, 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 really shitty year for me. Um, monitoring, uh, again, we are having monitoring. We are talking to ULB to maybe even be allowed to run those servers all year and they get access to our monitoring so they see what we do on their WLC, so they see what's happening in their Wi-Fi, blah, 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 blah. So maybe we can even run this year round. Video, we actually managed to set this up on finish on Friday, which is the first FOSDEM ever. So again, we became quicker at what we do because we, do, we reuse more code. So, reuse, there is one issue. Obviously, you need to know your automation. If you just log into a machine and you fix stuff and everything's happy and then things explode and it's shite, uh, this workflow is normal. If you do automation, if you do Ansible, you have extra complexity which you need to deal with in order to, to, to not have things explode. And when you're on the stress, this is extra, extra work. So you really, really have to be committed to doing this, of course, else people will start working around it. Last year, we messed this up. We left old backgrounds in our video uh, config. We had the wrong date in our T-shirt tracker, all those things. This year, none of this happened because people got used to reusing the stuff from former years. So live and learn, basically. We will probably be using Nextbox, uh, Netbox for, for our CMDB for next year. We will most likely be installing this in a few weeks, and then we will start emitting... emitting um, DHCP config and DNS config and all these things from a database. So it's not just random files which you, can, which you have to look for. You have one single source of truth for everything. Our dashboard is still the same. Uh, hammer at it, try to bring it down. Um, if it explodes, then Grafana has something to debug, so they're happy. And if you want to look at what we do in our conference stuff, everything is open source. Just clone that and you might need to do a few tweaks but we keep all this in the open for obvious reasons. Same as those boxes. So this is already half of my time, and I was really quick about this. Of course, I am sure you have questions. Shoot away. So the question was if we are running free software on our ARS R1K, and the answer is ha, 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 ha. <laughs> Uh, no, it's iOS, it's iOS XE. Um, of course, you can't really do anything. We, we would like to, to use free software in this space. I come from the networking world, so it's really, really hard. Even network vendors who, who use like silicone, they just buy in bulk, like from Broadcom, run into really, really icky bugs, and they have teams upon te teams of people just dealing with this. Um, so doing this in open source will not happen in the next few years, unfortunately. Uh, so one of the reasons that uh, IPv6 only used to be a big problem was that it doesn't, well, didn't used to work with Android because they were being annoying about DHCP 6 and the likes, yes. uh, but it seemed to work on my phone this year, so what did you change so that Android suddenly started working with the network here? Um, that's router advertisements, and router advertisements worked with Android for ages. I will not go into the details of, of Microsoft versus Google and router announcement versus DHCP v6. Both sides are wrong. Um, <laughs> No, I mean, if you would have a system where just your, your end client would support both, and the farther you go into, into infrastructure, which is more or less static, and there you only have router announcements, that would actually make sense, because there is nothing to do, like, tell me what printer I have. You cannot do this with router announcements. You can do it with DHCP v6. So there is an obvious use case for, for doing this at the edge. But... People are being really stubborn about it and they just don't want to because they need to be right and they need to win and they need to be slapped. Uh, yes, for obvious reasons. Anyone else? I'll only bite if you don't ask, so...
This is your chance. What servers are you using? So the question was what servers we are using. Um, those used to be database servers like 10 years ago or so, so random old crap. Uh, it doesn't really matter. Uh, it used to matter when we did monitoring differently. Of course, this was a huge drain on, on our resources on the servers. With Prometheus, it doesn't matter anymore. Of course, it's just so efficient. Um, the one funny thing, uh, guess what the number one user agent on our network is on the whole uh, campus of, of, of UOB during this event? The, the, the number one user agent. Not quite, but it's Prometheus, yes. Of course, we, we, we scrape everything every 15 seconds, and we just hammer away at all the infrastructure. You saw the rendering farm. We have tons more of infrastructure. Um, and it's still so lightweight, it doesn't matter. So we use random old machines. And I, have, I don't even know how much RAM and how many CPU cores they have. Of course, we stopped carrying. We'll be putting SSDs in them next year, and else, whatever. It just works. Okay. So the question was, if we're using our own infrastructure, you will be infrastructure, or what we are doing? The answer is in between. We are using fiber runs between the buildings by ULB. We are using their uh, WLC, as in their wireless access controller. We are using their access points, and we are putting more access points, which automatically register with the WLC, and they then sorry, will be um, managed by the WLC automatically. So we just put more uh, access points. For example, in Janson, we put a few. We don't need to put as many as we used to. Of course, things settled down and stuff got better. Um, for the video, we do everything ourselves. For all the cables you see here, for the camera back there, and all the other rooms, we do everything ourselves. But we are trying to use more and more ULB infrastructure, but obviously in a way which makes sense for them and for us, and so we can rely on this being still here and working next year, which obviously when you're, when you're here once a year is kind of an issue. But for wireless, it would, be, it would be close to a week of extra effort to put Wi-Fi in all the places. So we have to use that. And it's really good that we are allowed to. Three more minutes. You? Okay. On, uh, on the website to working, yes. to leave uh, to leave feedbacks uh, to the different talks. Uh, it seems to me that uh, also last year recaptcha was used at, uh, as a method uh, to verify the humanity of users. There is any plan to uh, uh, substitute these things uh, with an external services with, with an internal services oh. Beca because I think it's a bit weird to that uh, the fact that I have uh, to contribute to some machine uh, mm. learning things, uh, I got recognizing you. Uh, traffic lights and so on, yeah. okay. to leave my feedback. Yeah, G gotcha. Uh, so the question, uh, just to repeat, was um, we are using recapture on the, on the feedback side to verify that humans are humans. And obviously, Google has been using this for training their AI systems for years, like identify a storefront, identify a car, identify a dog which is just training data for them to, to use for, the, for their AI. Uh, and this is basically giving stuff away for free at a free and open source conference, and it's only giving to one entity. And the question was if we would be able to host this ourselves. Uh, the answer is probably yes, if this assists. I have no idea, to be honest. We kind of need it, because people were being nasty about, about that form. It's, it, it does, the extra effort to really do it from scratch is too much for us to handle. But if there is some drop-in replacement, we would most likely be using this instead. So if you have anything, send it to feedback at FOSDEM.org, and we can have a look. Anyone else? One minute. Have you ever captured a security incident before, and how did you deal with it? The question was if we ever... Uh, had any security incidents, and how did we deal with them? Um, yes, and privately. <laughs> so um, 
I mean, I, I, I have this in the closing talk slides um, that in 2017 we felt the need to, to tell people which, which SSIDs we are using. Uh, last year we felt the need to talk about how, how access points look and not look. This year um, someone tried to ARP, spo uh, ARP spoof or ARP poison uh, the, the local Wi-Fi caches for, for uh, putting uh, basically, they took the MAC address of our default gateway and used ARP spoofing to, to grab the traffic and just see if any random passwords floated by. Uh, it's random bullshit from script kiddies. So uh, if, if any of you is in the room or you know one of those people, it's... Uh, yes, we can also do it. And, and it's boring and it's shite and it's a free and open source conference. Just don't do it. It's, it's bullshit. Okay. Thank you, so, Richard. Thank you. Thanks.